sermon for the day is this you do you need God's help therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your body as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship oh father how can I a sinner find understanding without you? How do I find the way to lead your people in the right way without you? Lord, I bow out so you can direct me. We need your help. Amen? Amen. Amen. While coming up with the sermon for the day, I sort of struggled for a whole week trying to figure out where I was going to be coming from. And then one day while walking, it came to me to come out of Romans. Because in Romans it says, what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, <laughs> that I do. By saying every Christian, oh, I start by saying every Christian who can take up the language of this verse. If you can find yourself in the meaning of pride, coldness, slothfulness, and other feelings which he disapprove and hate, are you day by day reasserting their power over him, over us. It is a struggle against their influence groaning beneath our bondage, longing to be filled with the fruits of God, fruits like meekness, humidity, long suffering, and all the other fruits of the love of God. But find he can neither for himself nor by the aid of the law affect his freedom from what he hate. Of the full performance of what he desire and approve, every evening witnessing to patient confusion of his bandage, a sense of utter helplessness and his longing desire for aid from above. He is a slave. Looking and longing for liberty I say looking and longing for liberty because I do that which I hate to do more than I do that which God would have me to do. 
instead of helping the homeless, I talk about the homeless. Instead of saying to those that are under alcoholism, under drugism, how can I find the ability to help them? To let them know that God loves you as you are. God will show me the way to guide, direct, and help deliver you to him. How can I love? Given the homeless no food, given the drug addict no drug, given the prostitute all that she would like because I love doing what I hate to do. How can I help you? I myself cannot help you, but with the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we can find common ground to start the healing process. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am cardinal, sold under sin, a fundamental lack. conviction, the smell of sin, how it looks, how it feels. Try to apologize for it as if it was a disease. Misfortunes heritage passed on. I tell you, Theo Parker defines sin as a fall forward. Nonsense of its enormity and deformity is to be found. I say Paul makes two statements as to help us understand cardinal T, this is in the very nature of sin and guilt, like grains in wood, tempered in metal, there is a drift away from downward, never upward. A relishing of sin, a relishing of sin, a fault, facility towards transgression. It is this carnal mind that constructs the essence of hostility to God. Romans 8. The carnality betray, betray itself in native and habitual, hab habitual residency to law, even when recognizing as holy, just, and good the very existence of a command insight to rebellion. Romans 7 and 7. To light, 
John 3, 19 and 20, man, men are like bugs under a stone. Turn up the stone and they run to their holes. Are you running when you see the light of God? Are you a bug in hiding? Do you love doing the wrong thing and hate doing the right thing? The wrong thing for the right reason, the right thing for the wrong reason. Now to love, even the tender percents of grace are resistant by the sinner. In other words, if you go to a sinner and tell him that God can handle all your cares and your worries, and they look at you say, well, God didn't pay my rent last night, so I'm out on the street today. How can you say that your God's grace is better for me? I say to you that with the grace of God, whether you are outside walking around today, as you look around you and see the wonders of my Lord, all the things that he's done for you, the fact that you are speaking to me right now means things are getting better. Because God has a plan for your life. All you have to do is just give him a chance. That's provenient grace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You ask me, well, what am I going to do? Tonight, where will I sleep? Trust in God, and you will have a place to sleep tonight. Whether it be in your car, whether it be on a church step, or maybe someone will take you to a motel room and give you a good night's sleep, a warm bath in the morning, and your day starts all over again. Understanding that your day starts all over again. Who's going to get you up this morning? It will be that provenient grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will get you up, start you on your way, put you in your right mind, but all you have to say is, I believe, I trust, I love my God. Now, second, captivity sold under sin. There is a voluntary surrounding to the power, of surrendering to the power of evil. Dominion of evil thoughts opening the mind to the entrance of images of lust and imagine 
nation in corrupt desire. Can you imagine this? Can you see yourself under the dominion of evil thoughts? Sways of vicarious habits even when the bondage is felt to be heavy, the sinner will revent his own chains. Proverbs 23 and 35. How you say this happens? The sinner just do not believe in what God has in store for them. And we say, why control of Satan? For the sake of a brief pleasure found in sin, man will submit to slavery under the implacable fold of God and man. You say, Satan has more control over me than my God. I say to you that Satan has no control over you if you will allow God to be your savior if you will allow God to control what you say, what you think, what you do. God has the provenient grace that we all need to share. It's not just for me and just for you. It's for the world. God was sent here to save us. Jesus was sent here to save us all. The word of God is in control. God is the one who we need to lean on at all times. For those of you out there, the doors of the Crucible Ecumenical Church of Christ is open. If you have no church home, look us up and come visit. Watch our sermons on YouTube. But we invite you here at 2 o'clock on Sunday. We have church all day. We would love to have you. Again, the doors of the church is open. For those of you who only need prayer, if you will stand or come to the altar and we will give prayer. Let us stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble servants, letting you know that through your love for us, we hope to some.